Oh. Skyman! There you go. Can you hear the music? Yes. Can you hear the music? What? All right. Welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast, episode 23-2, and we're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And someone needs to turn my headphones up. Uh, please, someone out there, turn his headphones up. Or turn your headphones up, because that in turn <laughs> helps Purnell. Um, I know, I know, I know. Just bear with me, but it works. It really <laughs> works. Uh, no, every week we listen. To, every week we listen to great video game music, and um, from the past and the present, and from all consoles and, and all the generations. And we pick a topic, and we find some great tunes, and, and we dive into it. And um, this is another week where we are uh, separated by a camera. Even though we live like less than two, two or three minutes apart, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we although although we work. did, we did have like a little, a uh, little picnic last week. Yeah, and it that was, was nice. nice too. Cause like I, it's funny. So like, um, I, like, on one hand, you see all the memes out there. People like to post where it'll be like, coronavirus, uh, like the regulations. And it's the one guy who's like, nothing's really changed for me. My life's gone completely unchanged. And I'm like. <laughs> Back in the day, I was kind of like that. I was like, well, that's really going to change for me. I mean, everything's exactly the same. I do the same stuff. I don't go out and do stuff. But then you realize over a period of time, there are small things. Small yeah. things that you don't even realize you used to do. Like, uh, so the idea of like, you know, it's like the board game thing isn't obvious, of oh, course. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. haven't played board games in a while. Missed but then, that. oh yeah, for sure. And that's like I said, when this when the, when the, when the regulations were lessened, I'm going to be still as cautious as crap, but that will be one of the few things I really I lag off on. Like, oh, hey, we're playing a board game together. But um, aside from that, there's also like weird small things that you don't think about until it happens. Like mm. I was in a discussion. I was like, you know, I haven't hugged a human being in two months. Yeah, we had, um, oh, it was weeks ago now. We had Mitchell, um, we, uh, we had Mitchell Wong on the show and... And they said that like one of the things they really miss is hugging their friends. Like when this is all over, they're gonna hug their friends, and that, that's why they like Animal Crossing so much. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and yeah, good. of course. Like Animal we, Crossing, we need that. <laughs> yes, like Animal Crossing is a wonderful thing for that man. Like just, I don't even like, like I, I just, like I said, I generally describe the game as something I don't really quite find fun, mm -hmm. but it serves a purpose that works for me, which is why yeah. I play it. And that is one of them, like people getting together. Like right now, even when this episode is over, mm -hmm. I have to go to a flower meet and greet on Animal Crossing <laughs> to get a bunch of flowers. To oh, it's a flower market. Town. I love it. A literal yeah. flower market. Friends get rid of a bunch of flowers. She's like, come to my town oh, and take nice. a bunch of flowers. I'm like, thanks. Yeah, so you know? yesterday I tried the Final Fantasy VII remake and it was okay. It was all right. Is, what about La Mulana? Gotta oh, say it. Gotta okay. say it. I gotta say it. I gotta say it. I really, really enjoy it. But the way I've been feeling like these past few days, like I don't think I can handle the brain power necessary to remember <laughs> things and to, and to jump through it. So I, be, I picked up Bloodstained again because it's just like, where on the map haven't I been yet? Let's go that way and, and run into a boss, you know? And, and so like those kinds of Metroidvania, like exploration style games are really good for that mood, you know, where you just, you just want to like pick up and just get stuck in, but I don't want to be like, Oh my god! I just read this tablet, and it means something. But I have to write it down and go to this other area, and then I have to maybe do some some weird stuff. I don't know if I'm going to finish La Mulana, Pernell. I'm really sorry. Well, well, I'm well not gonna, two things. I'm not well, going to feel a lot of guilt about that because I want well, you to know I, I think it's cool. I might jump to La Mulana too, but I'm thinking I want to get stuck in an RPG. I might play Final Fantasy VII Remake because I've never played Final Fantasy VII. Well, I'll be. Well, I'll say two things, and then I'll go to the Final Fantasy. Game. <laughs> okay. One, the statement of the Lava Lada does not surprise me at all. <laughs> but I, I expect almost everyone who starts this game to not finish it. Not, not necessarily because they don't like the game, but because it requires a certain something that a lot of people just don't want to do, mm -hmm. which is understandable. You know, sometimes like it's just like we had the discussion about games being easy versus games being hard. Some people want to play a game with that sense. They just want to be able to progress. He's like, yeah. I want to boot this yeah, up yeah. and get somewhere, you know, and that's fine. Hell, I was uh, playing, uh, I had to review the Shantae game that's coming out, hmm. um, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, and I haven't played a Shantae game since, uh, let's say, Risky's Revenge, even though I have them all, because I'm Purnell, nice to meet you, and um, so I'm playing this game, and I'm enjoying it, but coming from something like La Mulana, though... It wasn't hitting the same notes, you know, <laughs> and it obviously it's not intended to, but still, yeah. like, it was always a matter of, like, find thing, do thing, 
find thing, do thing. Mm -hmm. And I was describing it to the guy, um, to Joe, who gave me the game to review, and he's like, so what do you think of Shantae? And I'm like, it's a it's a series of familiar notes. Like I can lay down the I can lay down the framework well, in a few short statements. I mean, granted, like, you've been playing La Mulana for a long time, and and mm -hmm. then going back into it, playing in the hard modes and 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 with extra challenges, and doing that again, and then I feel like you can't just jump out of that. Like it's like um. It's like you're tr it's like you're you're training in high altitude and I'm then in like, too deep. <laughs> yeah. and I'm then in like too deep. and then like you come back home and you're like, "Oh. Oh, okay. This is this is fine. I guess this people enjoy this. I should be enjoying this, but I've been training in high altitude for the past year." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cuz like I am enjoying yeah. it. Like it's definitely not <laughs> right, a game right. I dislike, but I'm like I don't get excited when I accomplish a thing like and La Mulana, I'd like open a room and it finds a new area. I was like, "Yes, new location." Yeah, yeah. And this game I'm like Okay, new transformation. I guess I'll use that to beat the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Okay, new transformation. I'll beat the dungeon. Fusion dance. Okay, I can, I can like you know make plants happy. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Like there was no excitement, just a general sense of content. Mm -hmm. Like I'm accomplishing things, getting it done, moving forward. So in that regard, like I totally get it. And there's tons of other games I likely have that would fit that exact same vein when I get back to them. Where it's like I'm just gonna be knocking them out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, I beat this game. This is great. Then by that same token, there's other games that I can acknowledge where it might give me the same impression that you're getting from La Mulana. Yeah. One being Ion Fury. Um, if you're not familiar with Ion Fury, I'm gonna look at it, it is. It's like a it's a it's a throwback to like those classic '90s FPS games where every texture was flat, like Duke Nukem or Doom, where everything's flat. And you can jump in this, whereas you couldn't in those old games. But, yeah. Um, so is it 3D or is I mean, is there is there a Y axis? Yeah, it's 3D for sure. You okay. can Jump and stuff, but uh, oh, the it looks problem cool, is <laughs> it looks great. But then I play it and I get my butt handed to me on the first stage because my brain just doesn't want to deal with how fast the game, the camera moves. Enemies yeah. are showing up. Just like, okay, why is their aim perfect? And I can't target them. It's yeah. ridiculous. I was I was watching some gameplay of the new uh, Doom game, whatever it's called. What's it called? Doom something. Oh, Doom Eternal. Yeah, and I'm like, it looks incredible. It, it is overwhelming. I cannot. There's no way, no way it, I'll ever be able to play this game. That game is insanely frenetic. Yeah. Uh, I tried playing that, and I go back to it every once mm -hmm. in a while. But uh, I put it on the second to hardest difficulty because I'm a glutton for punishment, and they have a bit of. I'm not arrogant about my normal life, but I'll admit yeah, I'm no, okay with admitting I'm arrogant when it comes to game difficulty. I'm, I'm glad, like, I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> like, I feel like I can handle hard difficulty, yeah. so I immediately gravitate towards that stuff. Oh, and oh, it oh, comes oh. from a good place, though. It's like me saying, mm -hmm. I've been playing video games for so long right, you know. that I should be good, you know, at yeah. this point. What were so, you going to say about Final Fantasy VII? Oh, Final Fantasy VII Remake is sitting on my coffee table, and I so want to start... It's just a matter of like I need to sh if I do start I gotta shunt something else uh, like like Octopath. So I'm like, what do I do? How do I work with this? But I will say I'm curious about what your take on it is because I, yeah. you're coming at it with a fresh perspective. You have no nostalgia to back mm -hmm. it up. So for example, there are a lot of people talking about how they worked with the whole Midgar is now a whole game versus the first portion of Final Fantasy VII. You don't have that experience. So for you, that's irrelevant. Oh, it's yeah. just a matter of, did they make it work? Is it fun? So stuff like that will be interesting to hear. Mm -hmm. Also, like your take on like this game's form of the materia system, because even though I'm wagering that it's different in a number of ways, just by virtue of how the gameplay is different, people would used to would acknowledge Final Fantasy VII's materia system mm -hmm. as one of the best magic systems ever done oh, in a really? JRPG. Oh, God, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm one of those people. Yeah, I'm really curious. Because like, I know that so many people loved it, but I'm wondering if it's just because it came out in, like, 96 or 97, and that's, that's kind of what people were into. But the uh, the combat system, I was hoping, was more of, like, a class... had, like, the classic weight mode, but it, it doesn't really... It's all Does it have the option though? I heard it had an option. Yeah, there's an option mode. you can change it to classic mode, in which like it kind of runs on autopilot, and then as your ATB meter um, goes up, then you can like stop the action and choose like potions or choose like super moves and stuff like that. Um, but and then like normal mode is like you're actually running around and dodging and doing all of that, but also managing your ATB meter and then pausing the action and then choosing potions and, and all that. And actually, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. That the demo 
was not like super simple. It was pretty rough. So like the boss battle in that like was was pretty challenging. And um, and that gave me like a pretty good taste for it. So I'm, I'm seriously thinking about jumping into it. But I'm the kind of like I'm the kind of guy who like I see that price tag and I'm like, am I am I am I really gonna play this? Oh, you haven't I don't bought think, the game I don't proper think I, yet. Yeah, You're playing the demo. I played the, I played through the demo. I'm like, am I really gonna <gasps> play this? Is it worth sixty dollars, or should I wait for it to go on sale so that ah, I don't feel I... so bad when I don't finish it? I'll be honest with you. I know we're complete opposites because you'll just buy it anyway before it comes out, stack but, it up on your shelf, and be like, I'll yeah, get to it. But the but the thing that makes my opposite state work mm-hmm. is that though I'll do that, I don't expect other people to. Like yeah, when I try to I come back it. at it, I'm like, okay, based on what I think and understand, I wait on this or I mm-hmm. buy this or yeah. I wait for a sale. And my thought regarding you is, to be honest, I'd vote that you forego the entire hype train and not play remake. Either play the original first. Nah. I, but, the, <laughs> but the reason being is because, I mean, it's one thing if you can't get past the graphics. If, no, if I'm going to play an original, original, it's going to be eight. It's probably but that's, be, Yeah. But, uh, but the advice still remains then. It's basically saying, I wouldn't go right to the remake. Mm-hmm. One, because the gameplay style doesn't fit your usual style of game that you like with JRPGs. Mm. And you don't have that level of nostalgia that makes it so drawing that everybody's jumping on it right now. Yeah, You'd I will, be probably I will better say, though, with eight. I will say, though, the music, like, I, I've always loved the music. And I've listened to the soundtrack a number of times. The, the updated soundtrack is gorgeous. And like, really? and it makes me, it gives me goosebumps listening to like the but the battle theme and and the boss theme, mm-hmm. and it's amazing. So even if I don't connect to everything, like I really connected with the music and it feels so good. So I mean that might be enough for me to jump into it. Um, well, think of it like this. Let's mm-hmm. say let's say you were like, hey, I'll start just Final Fantasy VIII. You could buy that the remastered version of it mm-hmm. for like. Maybe I'm not sure it's between ten or twenty bucks, but I know it's no more than twenty dollars. Right. You'd play that. That's a sixty-hour game, which means it'll take you a good while to finish it. Um, by the time you're ready to go out and buy Seven Remake, at that point, it'll, it'll be, be on, on sale. sale. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, so, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I'm kind of just jumping around games right now, um, just because like I've been trying to just play more and give myself the permission to, to to not do something productive. I hear that. <laughs> if that makes any sense to some no, people. No, that makes total sense. <laughs> um, but anyway, let, let's get into this because um, our topic uh, this week is study music. Mm-hmm. And yeah. for me, like I don't do, like I'm not in school, but when I, when I talk about study, I, I do have to study things for work. I do a lot of research, like security research and, and research like on new products and I also, um, I also, you know, program games and stuff. And so I spend a lot of time. It's like programming music. I spend a lot of time, like on Google and on wikis, and trying to like learn how to do certain things. And so for me, this is music for like programming and for work. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like when I'm trying to really get into it. What, what about you? For me, it's a little two folders. Yeah. Though, admittedly, one of those reasons could just as well be another topic in itself. But <laughs> I'll I'll listen to like study based music when I'm trying to figure out recipes in the kitchen. Like, oh yeah, I look at a recipe. Whether I'm reading a recipe and just pr- doing it step by step, where every once mm-hmm. in a blue moon, I'll have some surplus ingredients and I'll try to finagle something that like I want this to be a Purnell recipe. Like, what is something that Purnell came up with that tasted good? Mm-hmm. This, regardless of whether or not the internet might claim otherwise, I don't care. You know, it's wrong. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing would be just like you said, like, and especially with this new job I got where I need to study more to get acclimated to with what is wanted, what's desired of me in that position. In my previous position, position, I needed to study to get a better understanding of like database concepts and like certain techniques that I might've been missing out on because there's a lot of like code terms and such that I would need to use that sometimes I just didn't know because you don't use it enough, you forget it, or you just might've never needed it before, so you never learned it. Um, so when those situations take place and I'm in my groove, so to speak, mm-hmm. I like to have good music that's playing, something that's not too distracting, 
but also kind of puts my mind in a place where I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm relaxed. Let's get this done. Yeah, like it's gotta, it's gotta be maybe not so much relaxing. Like the tracks I didn't choose were all entirely like relaxing, but they're definitely that style where it's just interesting enough where it kind of keeps my head bopping around or it makes me like stop and go, oh, that's really pretty or that, oh, that's really interesting. But then like it doesn't take my whole attention uh, mm-hmm. to get into it. Um, so I'm going to start with um, one thing. I've been really, really getting into, um, not really getting into, I, but like I kind of like rediscovered again Yasunori Mitsuda from mm-hmm. uh, Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger and uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. Okay. So I'm picking a uh, Chrono Mantique from Chrono Cross for the PlayStation, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. Um, so we're back. You're listening to a Chrono Mantique from the game Chrono Cross for the Sony PlayStation, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. And, th- and this is like, I mean, obviously this is the theme of of, um, of Chrono Trigger, but in the style of the music in Chrono Cross, it's got like a real, like kind of mellow, almost kind of island feel to it, but with that amazing acoustic guitar. Uh, strumming and, and picking in the background and in the lead, it's just so so good. I mean, I mean, that song originally composed by Yasunori Mitsuda is fantastic, but in this this form, I love it. I love it. It's a fantastic jam, and honestly, it's hard to even. There's, I don't think there's a track in the game that's bad. So that's the first part. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't think of one. Yeah. Find one. Um, we were well, talking about how, like, like when I'm um, when I'm working and, st- and like studying, I will listen to whole soundtracks by Yasunori Mitsuda, and it's just like it's consistent all the way through, and there's n- it, it never feels jarring. Like it, it it all fits really really well. Even like the battle themes and like like a lot of the sad themes and and the tense the tense like thematic stuff. Um, it's all really consistently good, and it has a really consistent vibe to it. Where you were saying, like, if you were to put like on a whole soundtrack of something that you're into, half the soundtrack might be a little too rough or, or not not in the way you want. Yeah, it would bounce around to the point where I couldn't reliably just let the OST play because 
one minute, it's like, here's a sappy, the heck, there's a track on, actually there's two tracks on my selection where that, this would apply, where um, the track would be great and relaxing and mellow, the next thing you know, it's like, blah, 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 like, scratching the chalkboard, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I don't feel relaxed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel tense. Oh, but, um, but like this is the perfect, like this is like the perfect, like this whole soundtrack and like arrangements and covers of the soundtrack are perfect for just like sitting in the background and getting work done. It's, it's great. And honestly, I will say the OST for Chrono Cross is more so relaxing mm. or mellow tracks than the alternative. All the dungeon tracks are fairly relaxing, town tracks relaxing. The battle themes get a little high, get or more high pitched, but mm. even then they keep the tempo. They keep they, they make the tempo up, but the volume remains low. Yeah, um, yeah, it's like the the tempo's up, but like it's not like hyper aggressive. Yes, yeah. exactly. So like, and I genuinely, I do love the OS, the battle theme for Chrono Cross. I always picture the freaking like drunken bar mate doing the drunk <laughs> stumble, and like bam, punch the guy in the face. <laughs> this um, game needs to get a re-release. I would love it, to to go through it again. I would like to see it get re-released, but with more content. More particularly, it might be something that people would consider bloating it, but I would like to see content more related to the different characters. Mm, yeah. just gives them more time to shine. Mm-hmm. Because I hate it sometimes. You'd find a character, you'd get them, and then their story is end, officially ends the moment you pick them up. <laughs> like There is nothing about them anymore that gets brought up in the game. Yeah, it's cool they give you the option with all of these characters. Like you just run into them, and you kind of learn about them, but like some of them, they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't give you anything. It's just... And that's kind of fun too, because you kind of make your own story in your head, or like they, because like you're playing through, and like in an RPG, you kind of play through the story of the game. But in mm-hmm. a lot of these older ones, you can kind of play them in your own way. So I feel like you're telling your own story, and so in that way, it's like they they kind of these characters fit into your story and not the game story. But I'm with you. Like I would love to know more about yeah, more about the barmaid and. Um, Starkey, Starkey. Cool. I mean, Starkey has a whole arc where you go into the ocean and find his spaceship. That is true. So he at least got a little bit more exposition than other guys. Well, I guess he gets a little closure, but then like he's so weird, and he's like a weird alien. He doesn't really fit into any of the world. He's just like a weird alien guy. And I beat the Actually. game with him, and it just seems kind of weird that like, hey, weird blue alien dude, come with me and save the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it is. See, that's how a lot of those characters are. Yeah. To be, when you be honest, though, it's just like, what? A, hey, I know you work at a restaurant, you know, tossing soup, but you want to come save the world? Hey, mind the store for twenty five yeah. days or so. I'm going to go fight alien. Right? You want to uh, uh, go risk your life? <laughs> come on, let's go. Oh no, I almost forgot my battle spatula. <laughs> it's like battle it off the wall. <laughs> it's like, come on. But that's part of the quirk. It's like yeah. you, it's like the, you just kind of throw exposition to the wind you just mm-hmm. accept that it's not going to truly make sense it just is but even with it not making sense it's still there's something nice about being able to say i learned more about my favorite characters in this manner yeah that this would be really great. neat they don't even have to do much with like the graphics like with um like with it with because uh, this this is this game and final fantasy 8 came close to around the same time and they're they're the, kind of that same art style on the playstation one where it's not quite blocky like final fantasy 7 but it's not exactly uh, the highest resolution of, of character art that you've ever seen either. I will say, though, that I played it on the Vita. That's mm-hmm. where I re-downloaded it to get my replay in, which I really need to resume, don't it? And uh, it actually looks okay on the Vita. It might be because it. the smaller screen, yeah, but it looks nice on there to me. Oh, well, that's good to know. So, well, I, think, might, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know it got re-released on the Vita, so maybe, maybe that's a good sign that it could come back. Well, let's not go nuts. So the re-release on the on the Vita was primarily related to the PS1 Classics line that they were doing. Like they would make these games just downloadable onto PS3 and such. So they were just the original versions of the game, just downloadable. Mm-hmm. And PS Vita was compatible with PlayStation One downloads, which meant that library could be played on a Vita. So I just went did a roundabout way and got Chrono Cross oh, on I there see, and played I see. it. That's very cool. Yeah, it's nice. It just it, it works. It's snappy. I love how you said snappy. No <laughs> reason to be said. It's snappy. Um, all right, so snappy. what is your first track going to be? All right, so I'll pick a track from a game I have picked from in the past, but I wanted to bring it onto the show anyway. Um, this comes from the game Death End Request, and oh. the title of this track is called Happy for the Wrong Reason, <laughs> and it's composed by Yuki Sugiora.
You're listening to Happy for the Wrong Reason from the game Death and Request, composed by Yuki Sugiura. So though the title seems very off and mean, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually a very relaxing track that typically plays during the game's more mellow, story-driven moments. So mm-hmm. I've mentioned on the show before, but this was like a year or over a year ago, so I'm okay with bringing it up again. So the description for this game is... It's a uh, it, it t- it's two styles of gameplay merged into one. One style of the game is you in an RPG video game world controlling a character, running around the dungeons with friends, battling monsters and the like. But then the other component of the game is a visual novel where you play as a video game programmer working for a corporation that designs games, but you're getting wrapped up in this weird sci-fi plot and you are interacting with various story beats trying to put together this mystery to help get your friend's soul that's trapped in this video game out of it. Hmm. So um, this music plays during a lot of those story exposition sequences, okay. like working now, in the office and stuff. I want to say this game's come up uh, a couple times on the show, but like not like this. <laughs> like the music was not like this. Oh yeah, like I, I know for a fact I brought the boss theme on back yeah, on our was. exercise episode. Yeah. But aside from that, I don't think I brought any music on the show, mm-hmm. but I have talked about it a few times because I like this concept of gameplay, this idea of merging multiple styles of games into one mm-hmm. to make it effective. Because it's, it's cool. Like, If a higher profile studio designed this game, I think it would have hit more people's radars. Mm-hmm. But due to the fact that it was designed by like, uh, like the equipment, it was like Idea Factory who designed it. So there's like, there's certain elements to it where it's like, it doesn't quite hit for like the, the average audience member, mm. which is okay. Okay. It, because I agree. I'm like, man, sometimes there's stuff in this game. I'm like, why did they put that in there? That's just stupid. <laughs> but the goods outweighed the bad for me. And that's what makes me... I'm looking forward to when the sequel eventually drops this year. Huh. I will be jumping on that. Whether I get a review code or not, I'm buying it. Oh, good. It. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I like this. I, I'm glad you chose this, this song. Like, it reminds me. And you were like, oh, you got something that it reminds me of. Because you, if you want more of like this type of sound, there mm-hmm. is a group from the late 90s and the early 2000s called Zero Seven. Zero seven, yeah, zero yeah. spelled out and then the number seven, um, and it's it's so good. It's it's yeah, it's very like kind of like down tempo early trip hop type stuff. Um, and do you know the artist uh, Sia S I A? Yeah, there's a garbage pail kid of her. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, so she's had like a lot of mainstream success in the past like five years or so. But this is where she started was was with oh. zero seven. Oh, okay. And it's so really, those are her roots. Yeah, it's really good. It's really, really, really good. Um, and yeah, so definitely uh, check them out. Uh, they have, um, I'm looking at the right, uh, yeah, right, at the right wiki for them. Yeah, it's called uh, When It Falls. It's, it's awesome. It's really, really good. And um, and Simple Things is also a great album. So yeah, if you like this, check out Zero Seven because it's very much in this style and it's very. Um, it's very kind of backgroundy, but also really emotional. So it's really nice. Definitely don't mind if I do, because it's going to happen, be happen. Yeah, actually, when I, when I when I was starting to see Sia like like pop up like on the radio and and like in, in mainstream, I was like really surprised because all I know her from was from like this early two thousands like trip hop group. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, she's still doing stuff. But yeah, she's she's pretty amazing. And and the group together with the group, it's really really good. Also, I also like that her name is one of those names that people like constantly mispronounce. I'm sure that's what happened. Sia, Sire, yeah, Sia, I, Sia. I would always see it pop up like on my on my uh, playlist. I'm like Shia. Is it Shia? Not Shia. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would right. I would have called her Sia at first read for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So my next track, um, I gotta be honest. I picked these a while ago, so I, I have to re- kind of play them and remind myself of why I picked them, but. Um, I'm going to go with the next one on my list. This is from the game The World Ends With You, Ooh. which is uh, yeah, one of my favorite soundtracks. This is the, ga- uh, the the track Detonation for the Nintendo DS, composed by Takaharo Ishimoto. Hey, I already know it in my head. It's like, stand back, Detonation. <laughs> stand back like a vortex cortex. I don't even have to play the track. I can just let you uh, sing it out. <laughs> just, I'll just sing the whole song. <laughs> Morality. Rich kids, they cheer the 
of beauty More easy cross, that's what they like Complex going on and on Insanity means nothing with vanity Good creatures, they wallow with their holly Y'all now truly go kiss the cake Love to say cheers to your island, baby You chose the left direction Left your shadow on a color with the sorrow But how could I? Why should I? I will Take part in our pretty decoration Drink them all up with veracity, curiosity Deadly drop is the dawn of positivity Caution, the first cross that tastes so good Maniac track from the floor tonight Mixed up with the Zodiac Maniac Got a heart attack, the flatline, my lifeline Heart is hardy, pumping up steadily The madman boys on the streets again What a game You've seen its foundation Holding up a ragged nation You know it in your mind What it's like and how it lies You want the right resolution The right to get another portion You know now is the time to get ready for detonation Rise up like a vortex cortex Reality is full of immorality Read free to the cheer, the diffuser Want to eat crust, that's what they like Complex going on and on Insanity means nothing with the vanity Good creatures, they wallow in their holly And now sweetie, go kiss the cake Drink them all up for asking curiosity Deadly drop is a daughter positivity Talking the first five tastes so good Maniac track on the floor tonight Mixed up with the Zodiac Maniac Got a heart attack, the flatline, my lifeline Heart and party pumping up steadily The madman boys on the streets again What a game <laughs> that was Detonation from The World Ends With You, composed by Takaharu Ishimoto for the Nintendo DS. Yeah, that's my stuff. Get, get that Purnell seal of, of approval? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it's, it's not a mystery to anybody that The World Ends With You is probably one of my favorite OSTs, and mm-hmm. I still think it was one of... It's not even developed by Square unless Jupiter's a uh, second party, of like a party within their company, but... It's like the, one of the best games they've put out in the last 20 years, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, I, I, I do really... The game is awesome. It looks crazy. The soundtrack is super unique, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, I remember back in the day not liking the changes they made when they released it on um, on I, like iPads and I, um, like basically Apple devices, and then they eventually re-released it on the Switch with those same changes. But looking at it now as I am today... I wonder if maybe I would like it more because one of the best but also worst aspects of the original game was the two screen gameplay where you're like battle controlling two battles at once. And when yeah. I would play on the harder difficulty, sometimes my brain would just like shatter, like trying to dodge attacks oh, on two different screens. From the start, I had the hardest time. I mean, I never finished this one, but like from the beginning, I was having trouble with it. Uh, I should say I give more credit. The music is by Takaharu Ishimoto. The lyrics are by Sawa, and the vocals are by Londell Hicks, known as Taz. Taz is good, because the, the vocals, to me, are like the best part of the oh, song, yeah, to an extent. It's really good. Yeah, there's a lot of vocalists uh, on the soundtrack. Not, he doesn't, it's not like they got like one vocalist and does everything. There's, there's, there's a whole, whole bunch. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, this is the kind of track that just makes you like bob your head. And it's not like going off in so many different directions. So like, am I getting like distracted? You know, like you don't want to be like distracted when you're in the middle of something. If that um, was about the ass, I was like, I'm curious why you chose this, but I could see that. Like, if the if the volume is low, not like high, then the sound is just kind of in the background playing. You're like, ah. yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's just good. It can loop, and and actually a lot of the music from this game can do that too. Um, so it's just like it all just like kind of fits. It just fits in the background. Fits to what I'm doing. Um, kind of keeps my vibe going, you know, it keeps my, like, you know, I'm, again, I'm not getting distracted, you know, it's good. And I should say, too, like, we're talking about, like, music for studying and stuff. You know, we have, a like, a lot more time at home, and we have a lot of resources available to us now online. Like, you should learn something. Yeah, pick something up. Like, find, a, like, a hobby that you've always been interested in or curious about. Like, now is, like, the best time to be curious about things. It really is, yeah. though at the same time it's also slightly dangerous. Gotta be careful. Oh, yeah. I notice now, like, I'll boot up something, 
where I'll tell myself, I'm going to study this thing. This is my plan for this mm-hmm. week. And then I get home from what I was doing or if I'm working at home, mm-hmm. I lock out. And it's like, okay, time to do that thing I should have done. But uh, the game's right there. It's like it pretty much goes back to what we yeah. were talking about before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where it's, it's like dangerous could, because like, there's a lot of distractions or you can easily like let your brain like wander. Yeah, it's yeah. like we were talking about earlier about the video games where it's like I can play a game that makes me makes my brain have to work overtime mm-hmm. to work through the noops or I can play comfort. Play something that's yeah, relaxing exactly. and laid back. Same logic. It's like, hey, I could sit down and study this concept, which will require my brain to work a bit more. Mm-hmm. But I also have this game that if I just boot it up, it feels good, and it works. And don't get me wrong, neither choice is wrong. <laughs> but it's I've been, yeah, I've been yeah, in bubble yeah. gear where it's like I want to do more with the time because the time is there. It's there. Yeah, it's it's tough though. It, it really is tough. And I I am like I fall a victim to myself of wanting to always be doing something all the time and then feeling mm-hmm. guilty when I'm not. So I'm trying to like not push myself into that. But with like the weather changing and with um, just wanting to do more around the house, I got really into gardening. So I've been studying a lot about that and like and putting it, you know, putting it into action and hoping for the best, obviously, <laughs> pretty much. But meanwhile, I'm envious of that. Yeah, because just I'm, for it. I'm, somebody, I don't know who it was. If it was a listener to the show, by all means, let me know and thank you. But somebody mystery gifted me two habanero plants last week. Yeah, they I just were figure at out my who that door. Was. Yeah, who, yeah, do you know who that was? No, no, no idea. <laughs> but now I have them, and I'm like, okay, I got to try to make these things work. So even with just two plants, I'm already in this mindset where I'm like freaking out because I buried them both. One I buried in a pot, and the other I just buried it in the ground. No, you planted. Now, Don't say you I buried planted. them. Oh, they're <laughs> dead. It sounds no, like you've already I, given up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I planted them. I planted yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one in the pot is doing great, it seems like, anyway. The one I buried, I, I planted in the ground. I'm anxious about because I can already tell bugs have gotten to it. There's like holes in the leaves and mess. It'll happen. So, That'll happen. Um, a lot of times, worried, like you can't stop that. Yeah. But that was—is it killing it? Is the question? Like, I could keep watering it as it's getting mauled at, but if it keeps growing, that's fine. But well, I mean, are there still leaves that are not destroyed? I think there was a one or two, but for the most mm. part, there's some nibblage. Though I'm debating what a friend suggested, which is get like a milk carton. Cut the top off and just shit, just like shunt it over top of it. Yeah, that's what we did um, with ours. But make sure it's like a cl- like clearish, because yeah, like you're, you're creating like like a little mini greenhouse for each of your plants, and that that will help. Uh, but like right now, like you want them to get sun and water. What you can do is uh, get a little spray bottle and fill it with a little bit of of water and a little bit of soap, mm-hmm. and that way bugs can't bugs are deterred and they also can't stick to the plant. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like it's two of the three ingredients to my weed killer. It's, uh, pretty much, yeah. You just it's a bit you're not using a whole lot of poison. So if you see stuff like that, I'm slowly figuring out. But we have birds like just diving into our beds right now and trying to look for worms and seeds. And it's it's and we're like, what are well, we? Well, maybe do? You, maybe if you close the window, they wouldn't get into your bedroom. <laughs> I mean, just come on, man. <laughs> But I like them. They wake me up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for worms and I feel, seeds. I feel like I'm in a Disney uh, movie, you know? All the, all the birds wake me up, and then they and then they clothe me. And, and then, then they, they start pecking at your eyes. <laughs> they peck at my eyes. And then they make me breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine how a bird would flip pancakes, but must be uh, one of miraculously coordinated, you know, avian. They're really good at making eggs, though. Uh, but up, up. All right. Right. We'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> right, what's your next track? All right, this track comes from, I think I picked a track from this game years ago, or like a year or so ago too, but just in case I didn't, here it is. This comes from the game Forager, and the track title is called Endless Fun, and it's composed by Hernan Marandino. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you've played this one before.
welcome back. You just enjoyed listening to Endless Fun from the game Forager, composed by Hernan Marandino. And it's funny that this track is titled Endless Fun on an episode about study jams. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest here, though we were always taught that through TV and media that studying is supposed to be a chore and boring and annoying. Let's be honest here, studying can be fun. And I feel as though this track, having such a title, Mm -hmm. does a good job of making or adding a little bit of whimsy to a study session. Um, And not necessarily a study session related to reading books and chapters in a book or whatever, but this could also apply to, say, you're doing something math related, like you're just practicing a number of like equations. Yeah, there's something like, about this song, like, it sounds like math. It sounds like you're doing math. I don't know why. Yeah, because like, it's that idea, like, picture this track playing while a person is like at a board trying to solve like a, resolve a theorem or something. Like, mm-hmm. okay, here's an equation. Okay, this didn't quite pan out. Let me step back and figure out where I miss it. So they got their arms crossed. And their hand at their chin, like they're scratching their chin, like, hmm, aha! And they're like, they're crossing out the whole time, bit, 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 is playing. And it, but, but yeah. like, what, what is it about? Like, what is it? Like, like, what, what is in this song's DNA that makes me feel like this is edutainment music? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Like, you agree with me, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's just by virtue of like. <laughs> It fits that it's how it's programmed for a game where, like, the idea of, like, moving and accomplishing things in a, in a series of events mm-hmm. is a factor into it. But I think it might just be that it's light, whimsical, mm-hmm. not aggressive. Uh, it loops easily, which means you don't have to run your brain doesn't take it. You have, have to resolve a number of various tempo changes or mm-hmm. anything like that. Um, and it just, it just works. Like... That's why I wish this is times like this where we need something like Michael Bridgewater and shows like, well, you see, guys, <laughs> I but I understand this stuff because he has a doc. Does he have like a doctorate in music? Yeah, he does. He is he is Doctor Bridgewater. Doctor Bridgewater, or, or he just finished his dissertation. So in that case, he'd be the guy on here. who's like, look here, guys. Here's the here's the here's the here's the four one one. Here's the rub. Have, <laughs> here's the rub. <laughs> Buffalo and and garlic. <laughs> but no, but also like he, I could see him totally going like, this is why it has that sound. This is the style of yeah. sound that usually draws you to believe that mm-hmm. it can be used for this purpose. Like music is an amazing, mm-hmm. amazing thing when you really lay it on the table. The fact that there are things music can make people feel. But it's so ingrained in the art mm-hmm. that most people can't even describe it. It's just a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like so it's so cool. Yeah, it's like, and, and it makes everyone feel something a little different too. You know, the same thing can make someone else feel something different. Yeah, um, which is interesting. Like, like dancing music, music that makes people want to dance. Mm. You, the, the light, the easiest description might be someone saying it just feels bouncy. You know, but uh, once you get past the bouncy word right. and you're just like, okay, let's describe this from a technical perspective. We all pretty much falter. It's like, well, um, there's a syncopation with a triangulated beat at the <laughs> cue note point. Like, I- There is something about like a good shuffly like song that gets you moving. But um, that reminds me of that uh, that Dave Chappelle bit where he um, it's all about like what makes people dance. Have you seen that? <laughs> I do remember yeah. that he was like going to the bar with that guy. He went to the barber shop. He's like, he's going to play this beat and see what it makes people do. And he's like, it's not that white people have no rhythm. It's just that they dance to different stuff. <laughs> yep, that whole that was one of their best sketches. Yeah, that was really good. I was like, yeah, we're not so different. <laughs> mm-hmm. I missed right. that show. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Uh, it was definitely like ahead of itself. You know. Yes, it was. Um, all right, so I'm going to get on a track that makes me dance and puts me in a trance. And this is the soundtrack to the original Wipeout on the Sony PlayStation and on the PC. Music is composed um, entirely, except for like one or two tracks, which were, I think were PlayStation only, um, by the artist known as Cold Storage. And this is, <laughs> yeah, and this is Wipeout! Tra- <laughs> Wipeout! Um, but no, this is anti-gravity futuristic racing, but like like 90s futuristic so it's like a lot of cool neon colors and and like polygons and stuff like that but this is a track called operatique from cold storage for the game wipeout
That was Operatique from the game Wipeout for the Sony PlayStation and on the PC, composed by Cold Storage. And that is a that's a journey right there, man. I was like getting all kinds of vibes. At one point, I got a vibe of Back to Back from Sonic Rush, composed by Hideki Naganuma. Yeah. Then I got vibes of like a track that you'd find in a Crash Bandicoot game. <laughs> and it's like it was all over the place, but all of it was good. Yeah, all I have was enjoyable. I haven't played anything from this game and since like one of our first episodes, like the first ten episodes. I think I chose from uh, Wipeout, like on our racing music episode. Um, I should say Cold Storage, his name is uh, Tim uh, Timothy Wright. He's a Welsh composer. Really? Yeah, did a lot of did a lot of work, um, like a lot of commercial work early in the day, and then worked with Psychnosis and then eventually Sony uh, Entertainment. So um, I, I was like, you're like, he was a Welsh composer. I'm like, whoa, really? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Welsh, Welsh people compose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally not how it was. Here's a little bit of, a, of what else he's, he's worked on here. He worked on um, uh, Holiday Lemmings, <laughs> uh, Mickey Mania on the Mega CD. There you go. All right, I'm sold for that. That was a yeah, decade. That was good. good music. Uh, also had music on Wipeout 2097. Um, a lot of the music, uh, MTV Music Creation Studios stuff on the, on the PlayStation, he worked on um, Colony Wars, if you remember that old one. That was pretty cool. Colonial. Yeah. So, but yeah, ma- mainly mainly racing games and mainly games that were like those like create your own music type stuff, like studio type stuff. Did a lot of music for those. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'd like. Well, honestly, now it makes me want to listen to a little bit more of his stuff. Maybe there's some other James worth checking out on. Yeah, and I've I've been recently getting back into listening to like house music and trance music again, and um, it's made me like nostalgic for the the old like '90s rave like music mm-hmm. and so that's that's what this is for me it's like this is like when i was really starting to get into electronic music and this is the kind of stuff i would listen to all the time in fact i would just take the the set the, the game it was all red book audio it was all tracks on the cd and i would just take the cd and put it in my cd player and just listen to the music on its own all the, all the time it was so good until I, I until i broke the cd and i could only listen to the music and couldn't play the game anymore <laughs> Uh, how, wait, how would that even happen? Well, it was like track one or two was like the data, and then everything oh. else. Yeah, then everything else was the was the game. So, um, but yeah, yeah I, I would listen to this all the time, something. and um, yeah, I, I don't know something about like that kind of like repetitive, pulsating beat and things slowly evolving over time. It's just perfect. It's perfect for programming. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, color me soul. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it's always interesting when you find a game that you wouldn't expect to have a track that does this to you in it. Like, okay, I want to pick a track from that. Why? Because it just kind of works in this circumstance, though. I don't think they intended for it to fit that purpose, but it does. It does it well. All right, so what's your last track going to be, man? What's it going to be? It's originally going to be from Animal Crossing, which may well just be the closer track. But okay. um, I wanted to pick from this game because... When I first thought about the topic, I was like, it'd be really cool if I could find a track from this game that would fit this motif. And I think this one kind of does. Okay. So this comes from Silent Hill 4, The Room. What? <laughs> yeah. I like doing this a lot. Like, I'll, uh, we'll do a topic, and I'm like, I want to find a track that should not have a game. That it, should, it comes from a game that should not have a track that fits this theme. Yeah. And yet, I think this kind of does. So the track title is called Fortunate Sleep, No One Disturb Her Dead. And it's composed by Akira Yamaoka. Okay. All right. Let's let's. Uh, I'm a little afraid. <laughs> to be honest. Be very very afraid. I'm hunting. Study James. <laughs> Thank you. 
Open the door, Purnell. Don't even look in the peephole, because it's scary. It's what too I, scary. But I must know. I have to know. <laughs> my future lies behind that door. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. It should be. Well, welcome back, folks. You are listening to a track called Fortunate Sleep. No one disturb her dead from the game Silent Hill for the room. The <laughs> uh, composed by Akira Yamaoka. Uh, it's funny, we were just kind of joking a second ago that when we were playing the track on our end, my thought was, oh, whew, what a relief, it does fit the theme. <laughs> this, there was this small party that was like, was this in my head? Like, it sounded good at the time, but then when it's playing on the show proper, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> But it totally does, even with that to do. Yeah, it, it's it's sinister and cool, and kind of kind of jazzy, but also scary. It's a scary jazz, dark mm-hmm. dark jazz. Like I couldn't even go back and tell you where it plays at because, mm-hmm. like a lot of horror or survival horror mm-hmm. games, most of the music kind of just kind of blends into the scene. Like you're there, the music mm-hmm. is there to set the mood. But you're not sitting there particularly taking notes of it. It's designed to be a background track. Yeah. And it, uh, it does it well. Yeah, especially with horror games. There's not like a, a theme that's running. It's not like uh, in Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross where there's like a theme that gets replayed or, or like a specific kind of melody. It's kind of like here's some more atmosphere kind of feeling mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, which is cool. But yeah, you're not going to write like, oh, I remember in this part of the game, such and such talks to Sue and so and so. And then you get the hammer item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, like you'll get. It's only like if it's a CGI cinema scene where that could happen, but mm. it's even then it's rare. Like I'll play uh, like Resident Evil One, and uh, I could tell you I could pull the save room theme off out of a out of a row of tracks. Oh easily, yeah, definitely because it stands out and it means something. It's like this means safety. I'm in a room with a chest. And the monsters can't get me. This is where I sit down and puff my cigarette if I did that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but once you leave that room, it's just run, 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 dodge, 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 find item, get, drink herb, you know, whatever you got to do to survive and get to the end. Did you, say drink, I, did, you say, did you say drink herb? I did not just say that. <laughs> I, mean, I was how, like, maybe how do you, how do you think you take the herb item? How do you think that works? Well, first of all, you got to find the boiler item or the the the, the hot the hot the, the kettle item, and then you got to find the stove. Okay. So you take the herb, you got to fill the kettle with water that you find in the hose mm-hmm. in the backyard, but you have to avoid zombie uh, force to get that. Definitely more like bring, a tea. Oh yeah, you're making zombie. You know, you're making you're drinking the herb, which is tea. Yeah. yeah. That's how that's how you get maximum maximum healing potential. That's the thing, the lesser known secret to the game. Red herb and green herb is not the best healing. It's drinking the herb that yeah. does it. And it actually heals you to max and gives you a slight health regen. Oh, are you are you making this up? Because I don't remember. I, I totally made that oh, okay. up. There's no, there's no kettle in the game. But if uh, there was, you would totally use it to boil tea. I like to use a vaporizing um, uh, uh, implement. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a pretty cool concept. Imagine That's what I assume. a survival <laughs> horror game where... Um, one of the enemy types, or maybe even the main enemy concept, is like evil flora or mold. Oh yeah! And you could like occasionally come across dehumidifiers. You could put the water in it, and then put a certain like chemical in the water, mm. turn the humidifier dehumidifier on, and it would like release a mist into the air that would kill the <laughs> the moss or whatever fungus is in that room. Mm. And that would be a way to give you safe passage through that room for a couple hours or something like that. There's actually a, 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 a side quest in Control where that's like a, a, so you, have to, you have to fight off the mold uh, monster. Like there's, there's a mold that turns into mold monsters. Uh, and they, they infect the people and they get all like like zombified and they, they shoot. They're really aggressive and it's super, super hard. Like I, I've, I ran into the side quest too early in the game and um, I had to go back to it later. 
but the janitor's like, oh, help me clean up the mold. And I'm like, okay, sure, side quest. I'll just go and like, you know, shoot shoot spores or something out of the air. But no, it is rough. Um, and then eventually you're able to dive into this super deep pit into a part of the game you don't think exists. And there's an enormous like mold monster that's like a huge like tentacles. It looks like a giant like mushroom, like like one of those like this long shiitake mushroom type things. Jeez. It's it's terrifying. The the big monsters in that game make it worth it. But otherwise it's just you know, it's it's like, oh okay, I'll fight this guy, I'll fight that guy, that guy's a little harder. But the monsters are so cool. Control deserves whatever awards he got oh, over yeah. the last year game so awards. Every time you talk about it, I'm like, oh god, why have I not playing that yet? Oh I yeah, know. that whole backlog <laughs> thing. I can never. I, I I I'm 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 in the post game stuff, but like I'm never going to go back to it because it's just really hard um, combat now. And I just that's part that's the part of the game I was not really thrilled about because I have a hard time with it. But there's like there's a lot of hidden bosses that are just so cool. They're so big. That I can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to like? Is there anything you can do in the game to make the difficulty lessen? Like maybe you can still level up your character stats. I'm something? all. No, I'm maxed out. <laughs> Oof. I can. I can. I can find more abilities, but like I'd have to be good at the game to use those abilities better. So it's just I'm. I'm maxed out at that point. Like I was. I was really careful about that because. Because I needed all the health I can get, but that's okay. That's okay. That's just that just means that I was able to enjoy what I could enjoy. <laughs> that's a, AKA Matt's. Dark Souls style. Yeah, too. he's like yeah. this game is hard. So if I just keep jacking my hit points up, I'll just absorb all the hits. Yeah, exactly. Like I can just make it through. But then, I, yeah, it's 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 yeah yeah. I still have to balance it. But like yeah, the most hit points I can get. That's usually that's usually how I run those games anyway. It's just grind it out a little bit until I can't until I get stuck and then grind it out again. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn the track down even further, and we're gonna get into the part of the show we call the bonus round. Hmm. Bon- bonus round here, huh? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Bonus round. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. Let's do the bonus round. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Want to do the bonus round? <laughs> let's, let's do bonus round. <laughs> let's do the bonus round. Bonus round is where we play covers and remixes on our theme. And our theme is study music. And um, I got to go back to a, a, a classic for mine. This is the Sticker Brush Symphony from Donkey Kong Country. And this is a remix uh, that came out actually just this past month. Um, from the artist Mega Neko. Thank you. 
All right, that was the Sticker Brush Symphony remix um, from Donkey Kong Country, composed by David Wise, and this was remixed by the artist Mega Neko and released under the Game Chops label uh, back in March. That's so, one giant cat! Yeah, it's a mega, mega cat. Mega cat, <laughs> mega cat city. Remember Mega Cat City? From um, uh, SWAT Cats. That's got to be one of the weirdest Was that the name of the cartoons. town? Yeah, Mega Cat City. Um, yeah. And they, instead of like a brewery, they had um, a catnip plant. <laughs> I don't even remember those specifics. Oh, God, what a weird I'm assuming show. the bar served milk. Yeah, probably. Probably that's what it was. I'm sure. I'm sure a, a, a whole load of furries was a <laughs> was a yeah. was, was born from that show. But you know the funny thing though, thinking back on that concept now, as a yeah. kid, I'm probably betting I was thinking, yeah, bars would just serve milk. Why not? But then yeah. everything is milk. But as an adult, knowing that there's such a thing as a milk stout, I would think that all their <laughs> bars would just have milk stouts. Yeah, it's like um, I always thought it was funny in um, Power Rangers. They would be at their local gym and they would eat. They would they would have like a smoothie bar. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, who would do that? Like <laughs> <laughs> the Power Rangers would. The Power Rangers would. That's that's how they all met up, right? That they're all eating smoothies. I need to recruit a team of teenagers with attitude and and an aptitude for fitness food consumption. I've actually been making smoothies a lot, like since since this whole thing's been going. I don't know why. Just for for, I just get all this frozen fruit and I just I just blend it up with like milk and yogurt and stuff, and a ton of um um, uh, ginger. I love ginger. God, that would be a weird aspect of the show. I need to recruit a group, a team of teenagers with attitudes and a consciousness for health food consumption. Yes, and it's like six friends hanging out. And then those five friends who eat well get drafted. The one guy who eats pizza every night gets left behind. And he spends the That's entire show jealous of his other five well, Power Ranger friends. If you were an alien from another planet and you needed to recruit Earth or people from Earth to fight, of course you would go to like a gym and be like, okay, who's too strong here? Who can do this? We need five very muscular teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> can we find them? And, that um, guy, I mean, he drinks protein shakes, but he doesn't exercise. And, well, and they can't have I mean, families, so, so no one's going to miss them. If they, if they that, is, that is true. They never inter- Did they ever introduce any of the Power Rangers' parents or siblings I don't or think anything? So. I don't think so. It wasn't like that. <laughs> they never had they didn't have families all right we are off on a weird tangent so what's your what's your bonus round track okay this is not from the power rangers no in fact it's actually for wario's woods oh uh this is a remix from a guy that i'm pretty sure i actually did pick from on this show in the past i was pleasantly surprised by that but the track is the, a remix to the round clear theme and it's remixed and arranged by huge box 98 huge box 98 like huge, like J U G E, huge box. For the ninety eight, because uh, those 90, 96, 95 are all taken. Mm-hmm. Huge box, <laughs> huge box. But maybe ninety eight was just a really good year for huge box. Could be, you know. I, I yeah, I shouldn't make assumptions. Gra- he graduated from high school, you know. Or now maybe he was busy know. saving the planet and drinking smoothies. That's right. He had just been recruited as a teenager with attitude and health food conscious habits. <laughs> Won't you come back to me Having fun In the sun We'll never be so happy As we round clear Have fun and dance around Underneath the sun That's great It's warm outside <laughs> And cold Won't you come back to me? Because the forest is infested with green animals, green things, and forest life can see. I'm torn, muscular and fungal. Guys, that's a good voice. I like that voice. Oh, 
don't you come back to me? <laughs> Not Remixed expecting that. Remixed by Huge Box 98. And I'll stop doing that because <laughs> I don't have the, the chops vocally to maintain that voice for a long no, time. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but I can try, though. Uh, no, nah, that's my toad. Hope you guys liked it. Um, but I really hope you liked this track because it was a fantastic jam from a game that I adore and wish I realized existed well, I knew it existed, but I wish I gave it a chance when it first came out. But thanks to the magic of emulation, I've been playing it in my adult years. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a great. I love that song to begin with. I mean, for obvious reasons. And then it being, it's a really cool cover. Like, it's really chill. It's so just relaxing. And I think it totally fits the whole motif of us talking about, uh, you know, trash you can just kind of play in the background while you study. Yeah, yeah. This could totally be that track. It's light enough to not be distracting, mm. but relaxing enough that feel like it make you feel like it belongs in the environment. Oh it yeah, helps you, helps keeps you moving. Well, for more information on the bonus round part of our show, go to rhythmandpixels.com. We're gonna have links to all these artists' uh, YouTube pages and band camps and SoundClouds where you can all uh, get the music and buy the music and support all of these amazing artists. Thanks for joining us on episode 23-2 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is music to study by, study music to music with, and music all the time to study on on the things with your friends. <laughs> study to music jam. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a really good episode. I had a great episode today, Pernell. I had a good episode, including Dunkin' Donuts coffee and Jelly Knot Jam beer and Dasani sparkling water. Tell me about that. I, I, haven't, I haven't been drinking, so tell me about the Jelly Knot Jam beer. It's a sour, cherry oh. limeade beer. You keep it. It's all yours. Don't want I didn't it. Ex- I didn't expect it to be a sour, believe it or not. Hmm. I'm not... I'm, I won't say I hate sours, <laughs> but I never gravitate to them. It's usually something that I'll drink, and if it works, it works. I wanted a beer that tasted like cherry limey and didn't expect it to be a sour. Yeah. So. Uh, well, yeah, beer is not the best study beverage. Usually that's no, it is tea. Not. Usually it's coffee. I did buy a, a container of Youthberry tea today along with an Earl Grey cream mm. tea. Ooh. So hopefully they will be getting used in the near future because, again, I got to study freaking inferential statistics over the next couple weeks mm. in anticipation of work. And it will be a fun learning experience for me, which will include lots of study jams. <laughs> so uh, I have a should be fun. I have a tea. It's a it's a green tea blend with uh, rooibos, and it's really really good. It's uh, it's decaf, but it's it's super it's super mellow. Has like a like a slight fruity flavor to it. It's really really good. I got. I'm I'm trying to remember the tea place I used to exist where I bought this one rooibos tea that had these like real like candy like jimmies in it. Oh. Which at the time I thought that's what a Roy Boss was was those <laughs> no, little no, like no, no. sweet jimmies because when you boiled it they would kind of dissolve into the water and it you didn't have to put sugar in it it was just it had like a natural sweetness mm. to it that was a it was probably to this day one of the best teas I've ever had and I've never seen it again and I miss it it's up there with Buena Sweet Booty Hot Sauce which is also 
one of probably the best hot sauce I've ever had. I've never seen it or anything like it mm. ever again. And I miss it. Was it a sweet booty hot sauce? Literally, yes. <laughs> and for for those listening and going, <laughs> why is it called booty? It's because the pepper was the boot jalokia b-h-u-t oh okay. so they yeah. play on words nice and it was boot jalokia's uh brown sugar and molasses mm. oh, and it pretty, was yeah. it was amazing it's it it made you you cried when you ate it and you kept going oh, because wow. it was that good there's something to be said about food that hurts to eat but you didn't <laughs> care well um if you have anything for us that would make us cry Please send us an email. <laughs> Hopefully cry with joy at rhythm and pixels at hotmail.com. Yeah, you can send track suggestions or topic suggestions or hot sauce suggestions. Yes. We'll take those. <laughs> um, and if you'd like more information about our show, a uh, full track listing from all of our episodes and access to every one of our episodes, go to our website. Rhythm and pixels.com. And um, if you'd like to check out our YouTube page, it's youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. Uh, there is uh, uploads of all of our episodes, and there's a 24-7 radio stream of nothing but 8-bit and 16-bit classics. Um, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. We have a little group called Rhythm and Pixels Chat. You go there and um, talk with us. There's usually a lot of uh, game discussion going on people like you know what have, they, what have they finished what are they playing for the month um that sort of thing that's always really cool and if you like I'm very engaged in that so get on there yeah they get on i'm there. always talking uh, we also have a discord server that's linked on our website it's in the in the little menu bar at the top so you can join there and we're not as active on there but like i jump in every once in a while and say hello and there's a lot of really really friendly people and nice faces happening yeah, some, in the discord yeah, there's something nice about that. Like it, it's fulfilling the hope that we kind of had, where it was like it could become a microcosm where people will just chat. Yeah, and I've noticed that that's been happening a little bit more and more. People will just like start conversations, and people that are watching the <laughs> chat will, go, oh, I want to talk to this guy, and they'll just respond. That's right. Um, it's it's a really nice little little place. It's kind of like yeah, right. It kind of created that community, which uh, which is really cool. Um, and what was I gonna say? I had a thread, and then I lost it. What's the thread about Rhythm and Pixels chat and then um, Stitcher? <laughs> no, it was a uh, no, no. That's right. Um, our next episode is a, a live streamed, recorded uh, episode. So if you are a, a member of our Patreon, um, you will have access to, or at, at any level, you will have access to um, a live stream of us recording the episode. And you can jump on and goof off with us. The episode topic is the same as this one. It is study music. So if you have any track suggestions, that's usually when we play them. We'll also play any testimonials that you would write. We'll read them out on the show. Um, and we are going to be doing that. Um, if you're listening to the show as it came out on a Wednesday, it'll be coming up this following Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which is May 31st. Of what a 31st. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. No, it's going to be a good one. It's going it's to be an average size one. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it will uh, be a Sunday. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but yeah, if you want to support the show, uh, go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. Um, we've made some updates to all of the um, the levels. And so starting in June, um, we're going to be offering uh, and doing some more um, interesting stuff. So, um, But for now, I'm going to read all of the names. And then uh, starting next month, things are going to be changing up here. So at the Ultimate Red Book Audio level, we have That Nick Walker. Um, and at that level, uh, the highest level, you can record your own little radio promo. And we'll put it in rotation on the YouTube radio station. And I think that's pretty cool. We'll also play it on the show a few times just because it's like what we like to do. At the Super C64 MOS 6581 SIDSHIP level, that's, That's a large window. level. That's <laughs> a large level. We have Mike Myers. Um, and on that level, you can um, um, uh, write your own uh, radio promo, and we'll read it out and give you a shout-out on the radio station. And they'll put that into rotation as well. And then in the Dope FM Synthesis YM 2612 level, um, uh, there, uh, we give you shout-outs at the end of every episode, and you get access to prequel episodes and the, the live streams once a month. We have Sonic Medley, um, talk, oh, and, and Sonic Medley is not a guy who does remixes of Sonic music. That's actually the production studio, Sonic Medley. <laughs> I, I, so, <laughs> nice. Shout outs to Sonic Medley. Uh, 
thank Taco, Harold Howard, Dave Taylor, Reinhard Zelkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Lauten, Phantom Jest, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson from 1UP Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos from the Heroes 3 Podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version VGM Podcast, and Brian Pitt. And then in the classic Famicom 2A03 uh, uh, Patreon level, um, there you get you just get access to our prequel episodes every week and a monthly live stream of our show. Um, we have Buttsbo, Hammock from KVGM, The Last Wave, Johan, Johan Perez, <laughs> uh, Bruce Irons from the Mad Gear Band, Ed Wilson, the prime VGM minister of the VG Embassy podcast, Alexander Proudfoot, Davy Cakes, Das Dude, Das Las Rican, Bedroth of the VGM Very Good Music podcast, Kitsurito, Solus Sanctuary, Mix Six Master, John Jekyll, uh, Damian Beckles, Joe Vasallo, OK Impala, uh, Chris Murray, <laughs> Christy Nerson, Alex The Messenger, Messenger, host of The Messenger Presents a VGM podcast, and David Smith. Um, so yeah, thank you all. Thank you all so, so much for your continued support of our little program. <laughs> it's much appreciated. Very much so. Um, so yeah, and- for more information on all those tiers and everything that is available to you, go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. And we will be reaching out to um, everyone at the tiers where you can do all this cool stuff to our radio station. And I hope it's going to be okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be groovy. It'll be groovy. Super, super groovy. You also get um, uh, Discord um, uh, badges. No, no um, like rolls. Like you get like special colors and stuff on the Discord server at these levels. And that's kind of cool too. Discord Kool Aid, as we call it. Yeah, so everyone talks in that channel except you get to talk in pink. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I made everything pink. It's flashy. Um, that's it. So yeah, next week is our live streamed episode. Then a week after that, we have a fun topic for you. We might have some more guests coming in the next month, um, which I'm excited about. So we'll be reaching out to a few old friends and some new faces. <laughs> <laughs> new faces. Ah, oh, um, <laughs> oh, boy. It's like, whoa, that was a lot of words. <sighs> that's a lot of names pronounced. No, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, that, that's all I've got. Do you got anything else you want to talk about? Anything you want to mention? Um, I, I'm not, don't, don't hold me to this, anybody, but if you want to comment on it, by all means, please do. But I am debating on, like, eventually just starting uh, attempted stream run just to see, like, if I play a game on, like, say, a Saturday, rather than just play it in silence, I'll just turn the stream app on my PlayStation and let it run to see if people would watch it. Uh, That'll be on, if, if it's still set up and you don't change it, it's at Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash rhythm and pixels. It'll be on our, our Twitch stream. Yeah, I haven't changed anything, so that's totally what it would be. <laughs> so by all means, like, maybe, like, if you have any thoughts on that, by all means, send me, send a message to the email or just hit me directly like you typically would and just Give a heads up, but I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts on it because I've been playing that Robbie Reby. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd love game. to watch that. Yeah, and that's that's where I was thinking about. I was like, uh, people were like, "It's such a difficult game. It'd be cool to watch." I'm like, "If you want to watch me repeat and fail over and over no, until I the, get it right, the entertainment would have been watching you do all the nightmare runs of La Mulana." Oh mercy! That was a, <laughs> that was a brutal. Just fighting um, Vi alone yeah. was like horror. And you can also check out my Twitch stream at twitch TV, twitch.tv slash Robumon. That's R-O-B-B-U-M-O-N. If you want to watch a man in his 40s nearly die playing DDR at high speeds, <laughs> that's what I do. Um, okay, that's it. So thanks for listening to the show. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Have a safe week. We'll see you next time. And remember, we kind of said it already earlier in the episode, but it bears repeating because and remember, it needs to happen. I can't stop. But... You have, like, you know, while anything that you do during this time that isn't hurting you is a fine thing to do and engage in the past your time, there's no harm in taking some of that time and applying it towards learning a new skill, getting some study in, and, you know, further bolstering a skill or knowledge that you already have. But, uh, because it's really easy to use all this free time that we've got and just veg. Because, let's be honest, vegging is fun, <laughs> I have thousands of video games here, and vegging is not a hard thing to sit down and do. I love it. But uh, at the same time, for many of us, you will probably not get this much free time at a period of time in your entire life again. So this will be a great time to utilize that time to apply towards learning a skill that you can then take into 
the world and hopefully use it as a way to either better yourself career-wise or just fun-wise. Learn the guitar. Learn the tambourine. Learn the triangle. The triangle would be such an awesome thing to learn. <laughs> it's just like, whack, whack. Anyway, the point is, study something. <laughs> it's cool. And you, 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 will, you have nothing but thanks for yourself by even engaging it. You, you can't lose at learning. <laughs> there it is. That's a, you can't lose at learning. Nobody loses. Nobody loses. <laughs> the only way to win is to play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, stop.